that in December 1970, the U.S. peaked at 10.2 million barrels a day, and then oil prices went through the roof. We went on a drilling boom of epic proportion. Ten years later, we were drilling and completing four and a half times more oil wells than we were doing back when we peaked, and our domestic oil production from the lower 48 and the shallow waters of the Outer Continental Shelf had already declined from 10.2 million barrels a day to 6.9 million barrels a day. It doesn't sound terribly illogical. If we've been living on more oil consumed every year than we found for 30 years, uh, I guess it's inevitable that sooner or later we were going to reach that. The last great frontiers of new oil discoveries turned out to be Alaskan North Slope oil, Siberian oil, and the North Sea. And those discoveries happened in kind of 1968, 1967, 68, and 69. Finding oil in the North Sea was a big surprise. No, no one could reasonably have expected that. Our famous Lady Thatcher came to power. She said, we want initiative and enterprise and enthusiasm and competition and all these things. And sure enough, everybody went to produce oil as fast as they knew how. But there's a strange irony relating to this subject, that the better you do the job of exploiting oil and gas, the sooner it is gone. The British government now admits that it becomes a net importer next year, I think, and that it's gone in 2020. This is a huge change. So to imagine that there's anywhere missed as big as the North Sea is, is just implausible. As we look around the world into other countries, we see this same pattern being repeated in one country after another. Today, there's about 58 countries that are physically producing less today than they have in the past. now been sufficiently explored for the oil industry to know now all the promising areas. All the big promising areas have been identified. We're always a drill bit away from some fabulous new territory. That's the great thing about exploration. But realistically, it's been a long, long period of time uh, since we've actually discovered a significant new basin. I love hearing all these economists say, well, technology and ingenuity will bring out all these changes. And I say, give me a break. I do know oil field technology backwards and forwards, and the blackboard is dry. And it took 30 to 35 years to develop all of these great tools. We already have fantastic technology to find oil. We have seismic surveys, which are of unbelievable resolution. You can see the smallest formations in the Earth's crust. We have very advanced engineering to produce oil. And all of these great tools that, that ended up being great enhanced production techniques were basically super straws, just sucking the last easy oil out of the ground at faster rates, and to no extent significantly increasing the amount of oil that was going to be produced from a significant oil field. That was all myth. Some oil is cheap, easy, fast to produce. Others is the exact opposite. There's a, a big difference between producing oil from a free-flowing well in the Middle East that just comes roaring out and digging up a tar sand in Canada, which is more or less a mining operation. They're using more energy from natural gas to produce the oil than they're getting from oil shales and tar sands. 
So even the fact that people are, are saying, well, we're gonna tap the oil sands, that right there tells you that we're close to peaking because you don't go to those areas unless you've used up all the good stuff. Right now, really the only region of the world that hasn't peaked is the Middle East. Most of the serious projections for 2030 envision the Middle East producing 50, 51 million barrels a day. We know that Iran peaked at 6 million barrels a day back in 1978. Struggles to stay between 3 and 3.5 three and million barrels a day. Kuwait struggles to keep their 2.5 million barrels a day intact. They keep, maybe we can add a half million barrels a day. Maybe the UAE can add a half million barrels a day. So to get there, you would have to have Saudi Arabia be producing between 20 and 25 million or even 30 million barrels a day. There are other powerful voices within Saudi Arabia that are clearly sending the message out. Uh, 12 million barrels a day, yeah, that's probably okay, but it, we really shouldn't even think about producing any more than that ever. They had an intense exploration effort for the last 35 years, and with the exception of one field, the Hata field, that's the only significant exploration success they had from 1967 through 2005. If Saudi Arabia has now exceeded their sustainable peak supply, then I would argue with some clarity that the world has now exceeded sustainable peak supply.